Hello folks, welcome to Aurora Play. My name is Jessie Marion Davis and I'm joined today by Jamie Campbell, Principal Second Violin with Aurora Orchestra. And we are looking at not one, but two pieces today, both inspired by America, Charles Ives, Three Places in New England, and Michael Gordon's Gotham. <laughs> Um, let's start with Ives, uh, which I know this is um, a much loved piece, which Aurora, you've, you've played uh, quite a few times before. Uh, why, why is this piece such a well loved piece? I just think this piece is really unique. Um, like actually most of Charles Ives' music that I've, I've ever heard or listened to and played, he does his own thing and it's really different and it sounds contemporary and modern and new to us now and yet he was writing it at the turn of you know beginning of the 20th century plenty of other composers were were innovating at that time too but but he was kind of doing it on his own he was largely untrained and and wasn't kind of like a lot of other composers he didn't go away to study say in europe in composing schools you know so he he was kind of innovating on his own. I think that means the end result is that it's just a very, very unique voice and a different way of expressing harmony and expressing ideas on the page. It's 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 wacky stuff, but it's great. I'm jumping now to to this other piece um, by by Michael Gordon that's is titled Gotham and it's a portrayal of, of New York City. And um, this is a 2012 performance of Aurora performing at Roundhouse. <laughs> was a while ago but can you cast your mind back to the performance I mean I watched it back and it's an incredible piece of music with this incredible footage that's made from like decaying uh, films yeah. so you get these like yeah. blotches that surge and it's sort of it's the film has its own life through the, through the patterns of the decay made by the by, by the film but um you can tell I'm not a film technical expert, by the way, I'm using my language, but I mean, I imagine you had a lot to do during that. Do you remember being aware of the film behind you in that performance, Jamie? What I remember about that, that concert was, it, it was a quite a big deal for Aurora at the time because it was, you know, it was the roundhouse and um, it was relatively newly kind of refurbished, I think then. And it was just really exciting for us to do a gig there. And obviously it's a, it's a venue that's kind of linked with, famous pop gigs and rock gigs um, from the sound of 60s. And so it's kind of very, one of London's most iconic venues. So it was exciting in, in that um, in that way, obviously. Michael Gordon's music, again, a bit bit like Ives um, was, you know, it's it's its, its own thing. It, it doesn't sound like any other composer. Um, and it's certainly a relentless score. It's, it's not a kind of easy listen. I can remember speaking to a few friends who'd come to the concert afterwards and there was a mixture of people who'd loved the concert and thought it, it was like an incredible thing to see. And there were other people who had liked the first half and thought the, the, that Gotham was like too much. And the way he sets it with the film, it's like this film is quite intense to watch and you've got this relentless pounding music at times. And it, yeah, it's, it's a slightly uncomfortable, I think that's what they were going for because, you know, being in New York City, particularly like, I don't know, if you're over there in the summer, it's just, it is a bit oppressive and relentless and noisy and with the high rise all around you, it can be a bit claustrophobic. So I think that's what they were trying to capture with it a bit. I mean, Aurora is, is known, you know, you're known as an orchestra for your, your bold programming and, and, and your, your sort of collaboration with many different art forms. And, and today we're looking a lot at film. I mean, I really enjoy um, a label that I've used and heard in conjunction with you a lot, which is orchestral theatre. And yeah. I just wondered where you stand, Jamie. This might be controversial, but I mean, I think as players, you have been you've been seen and, and to be doing and, and been asked to do such incredibly unusual things like perform with 
with, I don't know, with masks on, with costume, uh, to make origami birds while people are watching you, to um, invite audiences into your performance, to stand around the whole of the, of the auditorium, or, I mean, in some cases, um, Ben, the, the principal double bass, even was involved in a circus, like, act. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'm asking you, where you, where you are as a player, do you kind of, um, do you dread those moments? Uh, do, have they taught you things? Do you, do you, what do you feel about the sort of stuff you've been asked to do with Aurora? Uh, no, I think it's great. As, as um, orchestral musicians, it can often be very kind of conventional and you can feel actually not, not very challenged other than to play well, which obviously is always a challenge. But um, I, I think it's always an interesting endeavour to try and push the boundaries. And, and um, you know, sometimes in rehearsal, for some of these projects that you do something it doesn't quite work but you you find a you find a different place you get to a different place by trying these things and you know some of these projects have been more successful than others but they they always bring something different for the audience i was watching the other day watching the the uh, project illuminations which we did in old festival i think that that was a really amazing thing to be a part of and and then most recently with the Berlioz last summer. It's just, it's exciting and it's fun, you know. Uh, it's nice to be challenged and to get, kind of get away from the conventions. Yeah, and it sounds like, I mean, there's, there's a lot um, that, that comes from the orchestra. There's a lot of space for players to, um, to sort of suggest ideas and initiate projects um, as well, which is fantastic. Have you been watching, you know, just from where you are right now in the world, have you been watching some of the stream performances of of Aurora at the proms, for example, and, and, and how's that been making you feel? It's kind of bittersweet, I, I think. Um, this has been such a weird time for the whole of the arts world, um, and it continues to be. And I almost, I find it surreal to think that we were on stage with like 6,000 people in the Albert Hall listening to us play Berlioz last time. It, it, it's, it's not been very long, you know, it's been a few months since concerts and performances stopped, but already it feels so long ago and so like removed from what our lives are now, um, which at best is like playing to an empty hall or, or like a, a video camera and, and uh, trying to give some kind of impression of what it might be like to be in the same room. But yeah, it's really, it's been really exciting to watch back some of these projects um, some of them quite recent and and uh i've got very fresh memories of and some like this uh you know gotham and the ives piece you know that's actually a long time ago now but it's nice seeing seeing them all again and and um i just hope we can kind of return to to that again at some point because it's yeah it's it's also always tinged with sadness i think as well what, what a gig it will be when aurora get back together it's been really um sort of poignant for me interviewing various players like I've been doing in this way, you know, just the chance to speak to you one at a time. That's, it's, I know you all so well, um, but I've never done that because we all, you know, we work as a group. That's by definition what yeah. you are. Yeah. So it's been in exactly. itself really strange just to sort of, but lovely, but tinged with loaded sort of meaning and sadness that, that we are having to communicate in this way. And I think the one thing it has brought is is this period for for everyone really is, is a chance to reflect. Our lives as, as performers before was generally pretty relentless, a lot of travel and touring and and you, you, you're kind of like from one project to the next, to the next, to the next. And once something's gone, you, you often don't really think much about it because you're on to the next thing. So it has been really, the one good thing has been a chance to just stop and think and reflect and, and look back um, with fondness on some some lovely memories of other projects. Thank you so much, Jamie, for talking to me today. Um, folks, if you are watching along at home, there's a link following this video for how you can watch these two fantastic pieces, Charles Ives' Three Places in New England, uh, along with the film, and Michael Gordon's Gotham. Definitely recommend you watch them. Thanks so much, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you.